May I now invite uh, Swami Sarvalokanand Ji to give his uh, remarks. I know it's uh, getting late, but please bear with us. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahano Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejvasvinavadhi Tamastuma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Reverend Archbishop Masharo Dear Sri S. Kulkarni The Larnet audience Ladies and gentlemen present here, with rapt attention, I was listening to Reverend Archbishop. He was delivering very elaborately and comprehensively Hinduism. At the same time, I was wondering, a man of different religion can have such a clear understanding of Hindu religion. I think, not I think, I am sure that Hinduism and Christianity are not two at a tight compartments. The Hinduism and Christianity are not competitive to each other. They do not oppose each other. Rather, they are complementary to each other. That is why Archbishop could explain Hinduism in such a elaborate way. The Hinduism and Christianity apparently look different, but in reality there is no difference. As he was quoting the Rig Veda, Ekam Sat Vipra Bahuda Vadanti. Truth is one, but sages call it by different names. These Hinduism and Christianity are two different paths leading to the same goal. Today, we see that world is tormented by sectarianism, communism, religious atrocity, fanaticism, and fundamentalism. The religion is supposed to bind us, to hold us together, but in reality, we find that it divides in groups. It disintegrates the society. It is indeed a paradox seeing that the essence of all religions is the same. That is peace, goodwill, friendship, Sympathy, humanity, humility, but in reality what we find, we find the religious violence and there is no place in religion like hatred, jealousy, but what we find today 
that we can say very clearly that no religion on earth preaches or teaches violence, disharmony, hatred, jealousy. In all religion, whether it is a Christianity or Hinduism or Buddhism or Jainism. But then is there something wrong inherent in religion? Should we blame religion for such stupid things? I think we'll do great mistake to blame religion for such all stupid things. Dear friends, religion cannot be blamed for such stupid things. The person, the people should be blamed who misinterpret, who misuse, who misutilize the religion for their selfish, selfish and an ulterior motive. I would like to give you an example, two examples, that under the sun, one person, religious person, is reading Bhagavad Gita, the holiest book of the Hinduism. Another person is forging signature of others under the same sun. Can you blame the sun? You cannot blame the sun. But the person misusing or doing some unethical work, utilizing the sun rays or sunlight, for that you cannot blame sun. Similarly, with the knife, you see, surgeon uses the surgical knife to save the life of a patient. With the same knife, a person, notorious person, antisocial, murders the people. Then for that, can you blame the knife? You cannot blame the knife. But you have to blame the person who is using and how he, he is using this knife. So dear friends, you cannot blame religion. You see, the religion, according to Sri Ramakrishna, according to our seers and sages, religion is not doctrine or dogma. Religion is realization. Realization of what? The realization of self. Realization of inner self. Realization of love, sympathy, goodwill and friendship. But generally what we understand is religion. Religion is not text torturing. Or religion, religion is not giving wonderful lectures standing on the pulpit or on the platform. Sri Ramakrishna had no formal education. He didn't enter into the arena of school and colleges. One sense you can say he was illiterate person. But being illiterate person, he reached the height of realization. And as our previous, my previous speaker was telling, that Sri Ramakrishna experienced the all religion and he declared the famous saying, as many paths, so many faiths. Jato mat, in Hindi, tato pat, in Bengali, jato mat, tato pat. This wonderful discovery of Sri Ramakrishna. He practiced Hinduism, he practiced, experienced Vaishnavism, he practiced 24 tantras of Hinduism. He practiced Christianity. He experienced Lord Jesus in his heart. 
he experienced islam he experienced everything and after experiencing a lot of sadhana sadhana is not of one hour or two months or three months or six months it is sadhana of 12 years sri ramakrishna could declare very openly that as many faith so many faiths dear friends we talk about the unity and variety there should be variety if there is no variety that there is no charm of life life will become dull and variety is the law of nature so variety should be there variety must be there but in the variety we have to find unity that is unity in diversity or unity in variety as our my previous speaker was telling ekam sat vipra bahuda badanti dear friends nowadays we find that religious dogmatism say our religion is correct my religion is correct my religion is true all our religions are baseless false good for nothing it is called dogmatism sri ramakrishna is to hit this dogmatism so nowadays though you tell so many things in front of public but if you go into deep you'll find slowly we are become dogmatic we have to go beyond this dogmatic attitude our attitude should be that live and let live that means in hindi jio aur jeene do this should be the attitude of the religious people or any kind of people this should be the attitude but always what we do we do that we will live only we will not allow others to live that is very very dangerous we will not allow other religions to thrive or develop or spread we want that uh, my own religion will only sp- will be spread and is will is, will thrive that is called dogmatism dogmatism that catholic attitude should be there we say catholic 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 but we should be very broad hearted we should not be very narrow i would like to tell you one story i think some of you may know this story the story is mentioned in our shastras that is called in sanskrit kupamanduka kupamanduka frog in the well i just i narrate this story sami vivekananda when when he went to parliament of religions he delivered a lecture why the caption is why we disagree why we disagree because we disagree because our attitude is like a kupamanduka frog in the well i think i need not uh, elaborate this story all of you know this is story this should not be the attitude the kupamanduka attitude i hindu sitting in my well i am thinking that whole world is my well similarly the christian he is sitting in his well he thinks that whole world is his well and similarly muslim also sitting in his well thinking that whole world is like my well and this is the difficulty or this has been the difficulty all the while so we have to break the barriers of this small world we have to break the barriers and we have to mingle with infinity that is the that should be the attitude of any kind of people whether he is religious or irreligious dear friends when sami 
Vivekananda went to Parliament of Religions and in the last session of the Parliament of Religions, he quoted scriptures, he quoted Bhagavad Gita, he quoted that Mahimnatra Stotra and lastly he declared is very very important in the present scenario what he declared. He openly declared and he expected also that very soon on every banner of every religion will be written in spite of resistance that help not fight, assimilation not destruction, peace and harmony not dissension. I think this is the gist of the interfaith harmony through Christianity and Hinduism dialogue. This should be our pre my previous speaker was telling the Mahavakya of this interfaith dialogue. I think this should be the Mahavakya of interfaith dialogue through Christianity, uh, this dialogue, this help, not fight, assimilation, not destruction, peace and harmony, not dissension. I think this should be our Mahavakya. If you remember this Mahavakya, then we can bring harmony, we can bring peace on this earth. Thank you very much. I don't want to take much of your time. I must thank Mr. Kulkarni for inviting me to preside over this prestigious function of interfaith uh, dialogue, Christianity and Hinduism. With these few words, I conclude my speech with a famous Vedic prayer, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santu Niramaya, let all be happy, let all be healthy. Namaskar, Dhanavad.